Hey, Flimsy Lunch Tree here, and welcome to World of Warships with our Friday edition video here, where this today and hopefully tomorrow we'll be featuring the Tier 9 light Pan American cruiser, the Santander. So, little information about this ship. Um, this is a paper ship, it never existed. Um, in accordance with the Rio de Janeiro Treaty of 1947, the old Brooklyn-class cruisers were to be transferred to the Colombian Navy to strengthen it. If Colombia had decided to order a new ship, it would have could have been a Santanda, a cruiser based on the American Wooster-class ships. And one of the preliminary designs of the Wooster-class during a cruiser from 1948, during the preliminary design process, as many times you had a lot of different preliminary designs for a ship, the U.S. Department of the Navy considered the possibility of building a three-gun, 152mm main battery turret instead of the final twin turret for this cruiser, but the idea was abandoned due to the complexity of the task and the uncertainty of the terms of its implementation. The Santander is a model of what a Wooster-type cruiser with three triple 152mm turrets uh, could have looked like by 1948. So it comes from the WoWs wiki and uh, some also additional information from the WoWs gamer blog. So um, let me give you my brief <laughs> impression of the ship and playing it. Um, it's okay. I would say it's good. Um, I don't think it's like amazing. Um, it's definitely a step up con compared to the t tier eight. Now one of the things you have to remember, this is a light cruiser. Um, basically the way I like to phrase this ship is it's kind of a blend of the Wooster and Neptune. Um, or not, uh, Wooster and Minotaur, excuse me. Uh, Minotaur being the light um, British cruiser, <laughs> very light, which many of you know I like to play a lot in the game. Um, so she's not meant for brawling, she's not meant for pushing, although you're going to see a very interesting second clip as this first one is going to be pretty short um, as both uh, clips I'm going to feature to you are in convoy and one of the things uh, as we're going to basically be hopping right in here talking about the action and I'll talk a little bit more about the ship as um, throughout the battle um, is her torpedoes so she gets uh, what is the range of these torpedoes yeah 10.5 kilometer torpedoes uh, so you can barely stealth torpedo as max concealment is 10.3 but the conceal does work out quite well in terms of stealth torpedo when you're torping ships that are pushing into you as um, you saw me ping the map earlier in the beginning of this battle where well, there's a very strong push um, coming around the far left flank here um, along these islands so it's a perfect opportunity in being able to uh, dump a lot of torpedoes um, now it's very important with this ship in terms of the positioning that you position it like you would be playing uh, a light cruiser. Um, honestly, I would prefer playing Minotaur or Neptune over the Santanda, mainly because of having the smoke in the 10 kilometer radar, uh, where you don't have the smoke here with the Santanda, uh, nor do you have, um, what's the other thing I was thinking about? Yeah, the 10 kilometer radar. You only have a 9 kilometer radar here uh, with this ship. Um, so you get the standard, uh, I think it's standard AP, I can't remember if it has improved penetration angles. Um, I was trying to look for that and I couldn't remember before I started this battle. But one of the things they did with this line, it's not normal for Wargaming to put um, gimmick buttons on tech tree lines, but they did it here. Uh, it should be a super ship um, consumable, but they've added it to the line as a whole. Or right, well basically it's um, combat capability. Um, consumable operational readiness. Um, it's a combat destruction which provides a significant reduction to your consumable reload time and it can be activated after repeatedly hitting enemy ships with main battery shells. Um, the requirements is it can only be used after hitting enemy ships with any main battery hits. Uh, required hits per salvo of course 1, progress per action 3.3%. Effects consumable preparation reload time is reduced drastically by negative 80% because you have a as you look now, I have a three minute reload um, uh, cooldown time on my repair party. Um, but if I pop this, it'll be much faster, but we don't need to use that consumable right now. It has an action time, time of 30 seconds. So this is a light cruiser, and one of the things that you need to be very mindful with this ship is that you don't want to necessarily push into brawling engagements. So seeing that strong push come down the left flank, we're immediately going to be running. Now, luckily for us, is that we also have a cyclone coming in, so it means the um, 
our max concealment basically would drop down to eight kilometers um, because of the cyclone storm pushing in, but also that we won't be able to see other ships at eight kilometers. Unless we use our radar, that means we can pick them up further out, eight kilometers away being nine kilometers. So in having this uh, division push here, we get to take advantage of it because they have a Schlieffen, they have two Napolis. Um, these torpedoes also hit rather decently hard um, as this Napoli player is about to find out. And we take him down as us. I think he also took a pretty good hit from an enemy ship. Uh, so we already have six torpedoes uh, hits uh, with the 84,000 damage. Um, now the torpedoes themselves, uh, they reload in 106 seconds or take any type of um, reload capability uh, or commander skills um, into action or like adrenaline rush. But the maximum damage starts out at 17,500 per torpedo, not taking into account the torpedo belt protection that different ships have throughout the game. I don't think Napoli has too much, even though she's a brawling Italian cruiser. Um, but the other thing here is that we get to take advantage of our friendlies spotting enemy ships for us. So that Napoli goes down, and now it's a Schlieffen. Um, you can often take advantage of these cyclones, and I do this all the time you know, when there's cyclones around and I can't see the enemy ship, is if my team is spotting the enemy ship, I use the minimap as a reference to be able to shoot uh, the enemy ship. So actually you're gonna see, we just got six penetrations there with that salvo. Um, we can see he's not that far away. He's about 11 kilometers away from us. Um, so it's much easier to kind of land these shots versus if he was 15, 16 kilometers away. Um, so we can just keep shooting his broadside because he has to push up. He has a Petropavlovsk and a Grosokrofus um, in front of him. Uh, so we just get to keep taking advantage um, of shooting him uh, without any fear of retaliation. So I think that's one of the things that helps make this ship strong as we get the kill there on the Schlieffen is the fact that in a situation like this cyclone, it actually benefits us really well. Um, also for the fact that we get to, you know, and understand the positioning when an enemy team is pushing into your flank, moving up and sitting up on the islands there to the left would have been a very, very bad mistake because Napoli, Napoli, Schlieffen, and all the other ships that are coming around. Now your base hull, uh, you have 40,200 hit points. Uh, when you upgrade it, it goes up to 44,300. Um, and then with survivability expert, you can see that our max heal is 48,350. So you have a very uh, large heal. Um, you also get uh, this, the, the Minotaur, the Neptune, um, kind of that super heal. So you can heal back a lot of damage uh, taking. Uh, so that's really nice. Um, these 152 millimeter guns, uh, we've gone for the reload in the six slot. So our range is 15.2 kilometers. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about the reload time as you're gonna see brief uh, post-battle results here before we go into um, the next battle. But one of the things I wanna show you particularly from this one is just the torpedo capability of the ship um, as we place fourth on the team. And I think uh, from what I've seen and looked at, um, I have the San Martin, the tier 10 uh, cruiser now, is that ship excels even more in terms of her torpedo capability and having a better concealment than the San Tander. Uh, so a lot uh, nicer in that regard. So in general, when you're pushing up uh, with this ship, I'm like, we're going to have another cyclone in this battle. <laughs> so I forgot that this one also had a cyclone in it too. Um, but you're often going to be utilizing islands. You're going to be playing, playing it similarly to perhaps like a um, Minotaur or Wooster without smoke. Um, you know, Wooster doesn't have smoke. Uh, Minotaur does, of course but you don't get the high explosive, so it's kind of this weird thing happening, but you do get that nine kilometer radar that essentially uh, the Wooster does have. Um, so one of the things that helps be mindful with this ship is your early on positioning in trying to um, keep as much health as possible for later on in the battle. And that's usually when cruisers can, uh, shine a lot more, um, especially as your team is whittling down the enemy battleships and Santander again She's a light cruiser and she doesn't take punishment very well um, We got very lucky there that the Johan de Witt was only firing high explosive at us, but we're gonna move up and get closer here and supporting our um, Transports that are gonna be pushing up through this part of the map um, So our reload time as we're gonna look at the bottom of the screen and remind myself um, I think it's just over, yeah, so actually we're just under, it looks like six seconds right now. We're firing our two forward main battery turrets. Seeing if we want to fire again here so I can check it a little more. 
Um, you do have to be mindful to not be greedy in trying to get their, uh, their stern turret off um, because you'll begin exposing a lot of side uh, and that is not good <laughs> because you can easily um, get overmatched if you're not careful. I mean, of course, you do have a belt you can angle and bounce, but um, I see a lot of cruiser players that get uncomfortable in these situations, you know, like we have this North Carolina pushing up uh, on this flank. Um, they get uncomfortable and then they go turn broadside to uh, turn away um, and run. Um, but in a certain sense, you have to be able to just be willing to tank a little bit of damage. This is uh, a game where, you know, you are going to be fighting with each other and it's going to be impossible for you to maintain all your health unless you're just sitting at the back of the map. Uh, so we're division up with Doombiggle, our clan mate, so he's pushing up in his Kremlin. And so he's going to tank a lot of damage for us and take a lot of attention off of us in that regard. Um, so here we're just trying to get our combat instructions ready, and so we've reached full progress. And so that's kind of one of the things that you see a lot of players trying to get early on in the game, um, is trying to have that combat instructions ready. So if you, you can do a lot with this consumable if you manage it well. Um, so I think you'll actually see a bit of me doing that here in this battle, as things are going to heat up for us here in a little bit. But our transport ships have come up. They're just off, um, off to the left, <laughs> the port. Um, so we are going to need to go ahead and start pushing up and running along with them here. Um, it is kind of an uncomfortable situation because the Johan de Witt can push up. Um, we also have another ship. Uh, I think it's a French uh, battleship um, who's sitting back in the channel gap. As here I'm saying, okay, well here come the transports, let's push up and defend them. Because a lot of times in convoy you see your team not pushing in front of the transports in this battle type. In convoy they're sitting behind, but you need to be up in front and pushing. So here we're going to get caught out. Um, we actually got quite lucky there because of our acceleration, most of those overpinned uh, on the stern of the ship. Um, so uh, otherwise we would have taken a massive amount of damage there, but we haven't. Um, and here you're going to see... Uh, what the ship is capable of uh, when you activate um, not my uh, problem force field around the ship. <laughs> um, but we did take a really a big hit there uh, on our uh, port side uh, from the GK. But we have to just leave him be to uh, Doom and the Kremlin. So we're going to be shooting the, uh, the bow of the Wujong here. We're going to be shooting his superstructure and getting some nice hits. Now I was thinking here, I was just planning to go for the ram, but then he also um, fully maneuvered uh, his ship to the right and uh, to starboard. And we went also to starboard, so we're going to miss. But we have any torpedoes because they did get perma knocked out. Uh, but we did get two torpedo hits on the GK while fighting this, so that helps um, doom out here. Uh, we're going to DCP damage control party the two uh, fires. And with these 152mm guns, we're just going to be having a heyday um, and shooting the Wujong as his turrets. We've outmaneuvered them, so we're just piling a lot of damage into the back of the ship um, as he has bigger problems right in front of him. <laughs> so up to 115,000 damage, and he's about to die here. And uh, our combat instructions have been fully utilized. And now you can see we, used to, we just used the health a little bit ago, and now it's just 8 seconds uh, coming back up. Um, and we can get a large use out of that heal. So we're likely, uh, probably if I remember to, we'll activate the heal here, most likely. Um, so that when we begin to build up the next set of combat instructions readiness, uh, we'll be good to go. Uh, so we go ahead and use the radar. Um, even though see, the Johan de Witt's on the other side of the island, we can see he's just five kilometers away. As we enter his five kilometer hydroacoustic search range, and so we're going to push up here. And again, this is a situation where it's like, well, I'm just going to ram the Johan de Witt. He's full health. Um, he has larger health than I do. So it would be a good trade um, to do here. So we'll see what happens here. This is our team has won the north. So now we just need to push down and support our uh, second convoy um, that's running the south end of the map. As you can see, the enemy team has advantage here on the south of the map um, as Johan de Witt's secondary is already opening up. Um, so we're going to go ahead and start piling damage into the, the uh, superstructure of the Johan de Witt because at this angle, if we shot his belt, it would bounce. Um, likely, it might be able to start shooting his uh, stern armor uh, hull here, um, but uh, for now, we're okay just shooting the superstructure. So one of the things I like to do when I'm doing here purposely is I'm trying to stay behind him. And this is uh, my goal is that if he wants to get his forward guns off, he's going to have to turn and show me a lot of broadside. So he's sitting still right now, but you can see his health 
uh, pool has dropped dramatically since um, you know 15 seconds ago. So I decide, you know what, we're not going to take the ram here. Uh, we're just going to kill him so that we can continue on fighting and supporting our convoy ships. Here, he's turning uh, more broadside. He wants to get his gun off on our uh, friendly, I think it's Anchorage, that's back behind us, I have to look. Um, but we're going to get the kill there um, and getting five penetrations. And as soon as he's dead, uh, now it is the enemy hawk. So we're going to go ahead and dump our torpedo stay uh, on and true because I'm assuming that he's going to just fully run up north. There's no need for him really to angle or turn away from us because um, he wants to keep his guns on the enemy, our transports. Uh, so this is another example of just constantly trying to utilize those torpedoes and because they have a decent reload time, 106 seconds, but then with the drill and rush, uh, they'll be ticking uh, slightly less. Um, it'll be faster reload. Uh, utilize the torps. Um, I mean, they hit pretty decent for a cruiser at uh, 17,000, and you know you can max that damage. So it really makes the ship um, more capable. If it didn't have torpedoes, I'd be like, what the heck did Wargaming do with this line? Um, but you do. Um, the other thing we, I haven't mentioned yet is the you have a short-range hydroacoustic search similar to the British destroyers. Um, so it's more of just trying to avoid torpedoes uh, that may be coming towards you. Um, as it's not going to be picking up ships, you know, it's not a five kilometer, it's not a six kilometer uh, radar. Um, but now we've pushed in and we've just uh, caught the broadside of the Charles Martel and giving him some citadel or a citadel um, and then destroying him. Uh, so now we're going to switch focus off to the Iowa. And so this is a battle that's kind of impressed me because, you know, now we're over 210,000 damage. Um, and no one's really been taking me seriously, it feels like, in this battle. They've just been too focused on uh, sh shooting my teammates. You know, so this force field of um, not my problem, somebody else's problem seems to be activated with the ship. So we're going to go bow in against the enemy uh, Iowa. And then we're going to focus on the um, German battle cruiser, the Eger. Um, and he's giving us a lot of broadside, but now he's kind of angling in towards us. So he seems to be taking us seriously. But it's too late, game's over, and now we go into the post-battle results. So overall, the ship's good. I wouldn't say she's great, but she is a good ship. Um, you just have to be mindful of that you're a light cruiser. So 230,000 damage, 341 main battery hits, four torpedo hits, three destroyed. Um, over half a million credits in earning, as now we're gonna go into the team score and see where we placed on the team. And so we're going to be placing top of the team with 1,830 base XP. Um, Doom did really well in being in the Kremlin and pushing as he should with the uh, Soviet battleship. Now we're going to go into the detailed report and I'll give you a breakdown of the damage. So 51,000 damage from torpedoes, main battery 179,000. Um, and we had some damage early on uh, or some aircraft, I guess, throughout the battle that we were shooting at. Potential damage was over 1 million, so with having that super heal means that you can be cheek and get away with more than what you normally would be able to if you had a standard repair party. So all in all, I think the ship's good. Um, not great, not terrible, much better than the tier 8. Uh, so I'm excited to play the San Martin soon and give you my thoughts on that maybe next weekend or two weeks because I need to actually start playing the ship. But uh, yeah, so if you liked today's video, give it a thumbs up. If you did not, give it a thumbs down. Subscribe if you do want to see more. If you're subscribed, thanks so much. I appreciate the growing community here. So until next time, take care.